segment ni this. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to Sanapan 7 and we're joined with Mr. Major Gilbert Suazo who is the port commissioner and we're discussing the day of the seafarers which was celebrated on June 25th and their upcoming award ceremony and maritime expo. So good morning and welcome back to our couch, Mr. Suazo. How are you? Well, a pleasant good morning. And again, it's always a pleasure to be here on Sun Up. You know, taking this opportunity certainly to pass on some good information about the maritime industry to our Belizeans at home and abroad and in international stakeholders in maritime. Great. So, Mr. Suazo, could you tell us about the Day of Seafarers? What is that? Okay, well, I think what is important to know is who, in fact, is a seafarer. Yeah. Yes. I think that's uh, a very good place to start. Um, we, I, and I keep saying this, that we are aware that over 80% of the world trade happens on uh, the sea, mm -hmm. the maritime theater. And for that to happen, there are a group of people who sacrifice, um, certainly their families and, and themselves, to brave the sea, to be able to bring goods in particular to the different countries within the world. And Belize is no different at all. So those people who definitely are, are managing, driving, uh, ensuring that the ship sail from one area of the world to another, those are the people who are considered to be the seafarers. Uh, okay. Now, there are also seafarers who are doing local domestic seafarers, and those are nearly are not documented as the international seafarers who are documented and must have a document to be on those on those ships. Okay. So those seafarers, um, the merchant who are working on the merchant marine vessels, all right, falls under the regime of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, because they are the ones who governs everything that happens in the maritime theater. So, in 2010, at one of the um, usual committee meetings, IMO decided then that it is important to pay tribute, to pay respect, and recognize the seafarers for their contribution the world trade and so it is then that 25th of june was selected as the day in 2010 to be the day of the seafarers okay and since 2011 that was the first time that it was celebrated uh the day of the seafarers has been celebrated on 25th of june with a view then to publicly recognize those seafarers all right okay. across the entire world and it is known right now on record that there is approximately 1.5 million seafarers that are traversing the world on a daily basis uh, to ensure that they brave the sea to bring goods and uh, the 80% the of the trade to the respective nations, leaving their families for several months just to ensure that we can get our cars, our phones, our supplies uh, into the respective, from one country into the respective um, country. So those, that is how the DFC seafarers came about and established by the International Maritime Organization. Ah, okay. Right? And in terms of how did Belize celebrate that? Well, what were we looking at there? Okay. So, well, what happened, Belize, as you know, is also a member of the International uh, Maritime Organization, the IMO. And so we um, align ourselves and are in harmony because just like how you have the president, uh, the country, there is also a, a Secretary General for IMO, and in one of in those meetings, it is decided, for example, what the team will be for the year, and then what specific area, um, wh what will be done, particularly for that year. Mm -hmm. Now, for this year, the, the team is your voyage, right? Then and now, share your journey. Oh, that's the team that's for this year's Seafarers. And so it is then that um, Belize, we deemed it necessary first to collaborate with other stakeholders. And so it is then that Imarbe, uh, the 
Coast Guard and Port Authority teamed up to plan the Seafarers Day in Belize. And so we are looking at two specific days, um, the 29th, um, which is Wednesday, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Tomorrow, right. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow we will be having um, definitely two cruise ships in the Belize City Harbor. We will have a cargo vessel in the Port of Big Creek, alongside the Port of Big Creek. Mm -hmm. And we will also have a cruise ship at um, Harvest Key. So we will have different teams who will be visiting the respective vessels in the respective ports. Uh, with a view then to start and interact with the seafarers on those respective vessels, and we'll also give them a token and a plaque to demonstrate their appreciation to the captain of those respective vessels. Ah, okay, wow. that's that's really nice. Yes, and then on the, on Thursday we'll do the the expo, where we'll have different maritime stakeholders having a booth to start to demonstrate the different opportunities that exist within the maritime environment. And if you recall, I was here, I think it was last week, when we were talking about the scholarship with a view then to bring more awareness to the maritime theater mm -hmm. and the opportunities that exist within the maritime. So that was just me talking. And on Thursday, <laughs> uh, we'll demonstrate um, and have placards and people who will be able to answer questions and to showcase some of the things that happen within the maritime fair in, uh, on that day. So um, it's an opportunity, and we are inviting everyone to be out there. It will be um, held at the Keynes Keystone property, um, where MRB office is located. Right. And that is where we'll have the respective booths and the respective um, organizations. And we have, um, obviously, Belize Port Authority, definitely MRB, the Coast Guard, um, Customs Department, Immigration Department, uh, the Port of Big Creek, um, uh, Port of Belize Limited, they will all have boots in that, in that area, again, to demonstrate some of the things that we do um, in support of or as seafarers within uh, the country of, of Belize. And this is Thursday? And uh, this is Thursday. What time on Thursday? It starts around 9 o'clock, and then uh, we'll definitely have um, some remarks certainly by the minister responsible for ports, who certainly is fully leading the charge. We'll have the chairman of the board, obviously myself, and we'll have the commandant of the Coast Guard, uh, the, um, the, 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 the manager, the, the, the director of Imarbe. Uh, we will all be giving some remarks. Then we open the floor for the people, for the expo, uh, and then everyone can then visit the respective booth and get questions in that, in that regard. For the first time, let me also state that we try to, as I said, bring awareness to the maritime world. And one of the things that the Port Authority will be doing is that we will be ruffling a job. Oh, <laughs> wait, that is, that is, wait, wait, ruffling a job. Yes. Okay. We didn't know a job. Like, you're not, I don't know a job. J-A-B, J-O-B. One job. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So, um, we, again, Bring in more awareness and to get more people involved, right? Young people. So obviously you'll have to be a Belizean, 18 years and over. You know, some conditions certainly do apply, you know. But the aim is that we want more people uh, to get involved, to understand what maritime is all about, all right? I mean, too often we don't even, as I said, it's like an invisible a kind of an industry. Right. Yeah. But let me state that. Let's say, for example, that we have ships coming from Texas, Galveston. Uh, perhaps, uh, usually, seafarers from a foreign country. When they arrive in Belize, our seafarers take over. Because if one of the first things that has to happen is that that vessel will have to be boarded by a health official. Mm -hmm. Right? And in the first instance, in fact, even before the health officials board, um, they will also have the, the pilot, a marine pilot. The marine pilot is experienced and qualified to certainly con that vessel, we use the term con, or to man the vessel and then guide it from the pilot station, navigate it 
into the harbor and then dock the vessel alongside the pier or get her anchored. Ah, okay. So right? they fully take charge of that point, like they, you said. Yes, they take charge okay. of that vessel. So it is out there. So obviously, there have to be a pilot boat that takes them from shore to the pilot station to get alongside that vessel, board the vessel, and then take it over from the captain of the ship and the crew, and then guide the vessel in, and then the vessel get alongside the pair. Oh, I did not know all of that occurs. Right. Yes. Now, before anybody else board, then the health official, all right, will ensure that everything in terms of health is um, uh, organized so that you don't spread any disease to anyone else. Right. right. Then you have the, uh, the other parts, other members of the boarding party, which involves customs, immigration, obviously customs to ensure that goods, um, uh, that goods are, declared are, not, and... are declared. Right, uh -huh. Then you have the, um, the immigration officer who will then check on the crew and if it is passengers to also ascertain the passenger manifest. Okay. Right? Uh, and then Port Authority, we do what is called the Port State Control Inspection to ensure that that vessel is safe when it arrives and that it is also safe when it is leaving. Okay. Oh. Right? So you check the hull, the machinery, the documentation, and all those things to ensure that everybody is operating within the confines of the law. Right? So you have to check, as I say, the fire safety equipment, mm -hmm. the navigation equipment, and those kinds of things. So our authority, right, our stakeholders in maritime seafarers also play the role to ensure that shipping is safe from one country to the other. I did not know that all of that occurs, you know. Yes. And then I, I would think similarly, uh, uh, like coming into Belize, the pilot also navigated out and then... That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So there's what is called the pilot station. The pilot station um, got, get an inbox, the vessel at the pilot station, take it into the harbor, hand over back to the captain, and then they start doing their thing in terms of disembarking passengers or unloading and loading goods. Remember, we import right. and we also export. Right. right? So that is when um, we have the cranes, operators coming to take off the containers or whatever, need, whether it's bulk or those kinds of things. So there's a lot of activity taking place there. And then, as you had rightly mentioned, once um, the, if, if in the case of a cargo vessel, they have done their tour within the, within the time allocated, they return onto the ship, and then the pilot boards the vessel again, take it out, and then the pilot disembarks at the pilot station, and the vessel goes to its next destination. Wow. wow. Right. Okay. I mean, you learn something new every day. <laughs> no, but when major swaza comes, all the time we learn something that we did not know, especially just like learning about the maritime um, market. I think, remember, we had that previous conversation, how yes. people aren't venturing enough, so there's actually... Um, a lack in um, human resources there. And yes. so great opportunities are there for people that are looking for jobs right now, that are venturing. There's that even scholarship opportunities where you can be able to get your degree paid for you. Yes. So you can be able yes. to yes. venture. And then you know you definitely have a job thereafter. So and amazing well, win a job stuff. <laughs> yes. And you win a job, which is like A1. That's the first and time I've heard that. Major, like, <laughs> Wow, I'm hoping that, you know, parents, teachers, students are listening to this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I know right now it's a funny time. You know, people are graduating. They're trying to figure out where they want to go. And they, they'd want to be able to get a job. A lot of, I mean, nobody doesn't want to get a job, be able to provide for themselves and their families mm -hmm. or whatever. Knowing that there is a lack in human personnel, there is opportunities to get work, quality work too as well. Yeah. And to be able to have your education paid for you i mean why not go to this expo learn as much as you can see where you can fit in and it's not just like they're saying one set thing that you have to do mm -hmm. there are multiple different exactly. opportunities exactly. that you can go you can go into management all these stuff so yes. even if you don't want to get your hands quote unquote dirty or have yes. to haul and pull or whatever it is that doesn't have to be for you but that could be for somebody else and you can figure out where you want to go yes uh -huh. major Swaza, could you tell us i I'm just still blown by the fact that there's a <laughs> raffling of a job could you tell us maybe some of the qualifications that are needed um, in order to be applicable for that eligible? job? Eligible? Or eligible, sorry, for that job. And what job are we looking at? Well, we are first looking at a job for within the Port Authority. Okay. Right? And as I indicated, in the Port Authority, just let me say what are some of the things that we do. 
just to give people sure. some ideas. Uh, uh, within the Port Authority, we, one of our responsibility is the coastal state responsibility, which is um, to also ensure that we register every domestic vessel that is in the country of Belize. Before that vessel is registered and licensed, because it has, just like a vehicle, you have to license it every year, but registration is a one-time thing. Yeah. Okay. So that we document the, the vessel, the type of vessel, the, the length, the tonnage, and all those different things. The name, when it was built, everything that has to do with the vessel. Before that is happening, just like you get a car, your vehicle inspected, we also have to inspect that vessel to ensure stability, seaworthiness of the vessel, right? So for it to be generally safe. So we have vessel safety inspectors mm -hmm. who will inspect qualified and experienced people who will inspect those vessels, the hull, the machinery, the navigation equipment, the safety equipment, to ensure that they fall within the standards as prescribed internationally. And we also have our domestic laws which specify what are the specifications for All those right. respective uh -huh. things. So we have vessel safety inspectors. Similarly, we have ports and marinas. Again, we have port inspectors who will go to the port, uh, look at the fire equipment that are there, look at uh, ensuring that oil is properly stored where it needs to be stored so they don't have any kind of marine pollution, uh, and then look at the general security. So we also have some uh, safety and security inspectors as well. Uh, we also have marine safety, uh, marine safety or uh, marine uh, enforcement officers who would board the vessels once they're on patrol out, uh, out, out at sea mm -hmm. to ensure that just like how you have a, a, a driver's license, there's a master's license which one must carry once that person is on the sea. And then we have what is called a seaworthiness certificate. So when we inspect the vessel, and ensure that the vessel hull, the machinery, the safety equipment, um, the navigation equipment are, meets the standards and specification. Uh, so we also have officers who ensure that you are abiding by the law to ensure safety of life at sea. So that is one of our, again, um, responsibilities. So safety of life at sea is put at one of put at its primary responsibility. Um, navigation safety is one of our another primary responsibility, and also ensuring the protection of the marine environment are amongst the key responsibilities that we have. So we have officers at all that level. And as I said, um, there is what is considered to be flag state. The flag state is like Imarbe is Belize's flag state. They registered the international ships uh, that, are, that are Belizean flagged. But when those vessels come into national waters, then... That is what is called port state inspection. Okay. So we have port state, um, port state control um, inspectors who will then go on board those international merchant marine vessels that arrives, again with a view to ensure that, just like the domestic vessels, that these international vessels are safe, the, uh, the navigation equipment are within the specifications, uh, that the hull, the machinery are again within the safety parameters, right? So, and then, so we have those port state control officers. We have the pilots again guiding the ship, guiding the, guiding the ship, and, and in. So we also have obviously accounts because people have to get paid, right? Have <laughs> <laughs> to. Yeah, right. People, they carry, they write your as well. Yes, so. right. You know, so there are um, almost every job. That, are tra that is traditional, or that, that are traditional, is also within the maritime, right? Yeah. right? Now, perhaps one of the fear is that the fear of um, not being able to swim or falling overboard. If you fall overboard, every person on that ship, right, who, who is a crew and the captain, will go to school and are trained to do what is called the recovery of a man overboard, right? So there are maneuvers that the vessel will do to ensure that they navigate to get that person who would uh, not fall overboard. So they fall, they got you. Yes, they got you. We got you. <laughs> after, after. Right, so we're going to swim in them and we'll make but, it happen, whatever it is we yeah, need to do. But let me also state then that these ships are 
in, they are from small vessels to vessels that are three, four, six football field length. Wow. Right? Wow. So, I mean, that, that enough stability. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you have to drop a word on this. You, you understand? So, you yeah. find a way so, so, <laughs> so, what is the fair, right? And um, imagine a cruise ship. That's like a city that you're floating on. Yeah. Right? So, in my humble view, we need to have a paradigm shift in the way of our attitude and thinking yeah. that we are only safe on land because risk is everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, exactly. Right? So it is for us now to look at it and say, you know what? Where is the um, area where I can find the best opportunity to move forward? And if, when I was here the last time, I said that um, there are several people with masters, bachelors, different degrees, degrees within the traditional um, with traditional education, who don't really, uh, who have not had a job for a long time. Yeah. And there are several opportunities out here. Definitely. So if we are to shift, right, and look at it, I believe that we can reduce the, um, the lack of jobs in Belize. Definitely, most right? definitely. Through the maritime. It seems, I'm yeah. really encouraging, again, I cannot say it enough to have um, people that are have some kind of curiosity but are just wanting to understand a little bit more about what happens on the maritime and just these job opportunities these scholarship opportunities come out to the expo there isn't enough people for talk to go wrong each every single style and learn more there's a rough they're ruffling a job there's so much ways that we can be able to inform ourselves how we can make valuable decisions on our career choices on our scholarship choices on where we want to see ourselves in the next five years. And sometimes we don't even think about the other possibilities of the different, you know, areas that we can go into. So let's not, let's squash the fears yes. and talk about what we're fearful of and have those answers right there addressed for you on the spot, guys. Don't give up opportunities. Honestly, if it's knocking at your door, open the door. And so, Major Swaza, thank you so much yes, for being here, for opening a door, for having, again, always a great time to have you here on the show, giving us... All this new insight that we definitely, I'm sure, like, people really value when you're on our coach because we always learn something. There's never, ever a day that we don't learn something when you're here mm -hmm. that we're like, oh, that's how it operates? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and Thank thing, you. Because he, he gave us all this knowledge, and I'm just thinking back of a story when I was in Barbados. Uh -huh. And we saw a Belizean flag um, the sailboat. Oh, okay. And we went to it and we just touched it and said, home. <laughs> so, so I, when you That's told so me about free. all, the, all the, the technicalities behind getting these ships into a different country, yes. I'm like, oh, oh, wow. Okay. There's a lot of work Here that goes go. behind it. And the thing is, people can be a part of it. We have such a high in, uh, uh, unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to work on how we can be able to fit people in jobs and their jobs available. There is a yes. lot. I, I forgot the number that you told me last time, the millions of amount of luck in people. It was 1.5 that was lucky. Exactly. Yeah. So wow. people. And the important thing is that more larger vessels are being built as well. Phasing out the smaller vessels, so that makes it even give you more opportunities. When you go on the football field vessel, guys, let's, <laughs> if nothing else, let's go on the football field vessel. But again, thank, thank you, you so yes. much, Razor. So, so, people, check out the Port of Authority um, Facebook page for the flyer in case you miss any details. Make time to be out there. It's from 9 to 2 p.m. If you can't go for the whole thing, go at least for the half of the day, go for the beginning. Find time to make these doors open for you guys. If you want it, want it, you have to go after it. And no one knocks on your door, you have to go out to get it. Well, this, so, is, what, well, this is what we are doing. We are coming to knock on everybody's door, <laughs> giving the opportunity, you know, exposing and enhancing uh, people idea yeah. right, with a view then to say, you know what, this is available to us. I mean, even before um, uh, I became the Ports Commissioner, I am a marine surveyor. Right? So you can even work on your own outside of the regular government or traditional um, organization. Right. Uh -huh. So there are employment opportunities for people to do. Right? So as a marine surveyor, it's almost like a port state control inspector who goes and inspects vessels. If a bank perhaps needs um, someone to check the condition and the value of a vessel, marine surveyors does those kinds of things. So, there's definitely I mean, look there, there well, next, well, next opportunity. I tell you, if you if you don't want, I tell you, if you don't want, you could be a surveyor. There's so many things you can do. So go and answer the call, final information, ask as many questions. Me just want to not care. He won't answer the field. Trust me, he wants to. And there are many other qualified people to answer the questions. 
Go out there, guys, and learn and get those opportunities. Tell a friend, tell a friend's friends. I want to go together as a group and learn together. Let's quash the, the qualms of our dash over board, I can't swim or whatever it is. Fierce the fear. Fierce the fear. Yes, yes, and head the fear. on. Let's jump Fierce into the become a seafarer. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Exactly. I'm That's very good. Okay, we're on the next team for next year. Yes. <laughs> and with that, we go to our next commercial break. We'll